Morning, Bear Nation. It's Bear with BearIndependent.com, and today we're going to talk about leadership. But first, we're going to go feed these sheep and probably water them as well because they sound thirsty. You'll get food in a minute. That one stupid guinea hen. I'm a big old livestock guardian dog. Livestock guardian goat. She thinks she's in a pack with this one. Mm-hmm. Not such a good listener, though. I see you, baby Jethro. Baby Jethro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Jose. Boom. Let there be food. Hi, Sam. And more food. Watch out, dog. Hey. Good job. And uh, get out of there, dum dum. Jethro! Hey, what are you doing? Thank you. One for my homies. Not yours. Boom. Battle dog. Let there be chickens. It's an Easter egg. We're almost there. I just gotta put this chainsaw up here because it goes up here. All right, all right, all right. Ah. Holy water. I had a pastor that used to call coffee that. Not my current pastor, but a former pastor. <laughs> Blasphemous or not, there are mornings I agree. Holy water. Let's talk about leadership. Uh, recently, we had uh, a series of deployments to... Bethany House, which is a uh, nonprofit organization designed to heal victims of human trafficking and sex crimes. They work in six facets, educational, financial, physical, emotional, spiritual, and legal uh, to put victims of human trafficking and sex crimes back together again. And our ministry, Grindstone, was there. What Grindstone does is, like, if you're familiar with Habitat for Humanity, it's a construction ministry. Think of, like, Habitat for Humanity as regular army. And think of Grindstone as, like, special forces. Small, nimble, agile, uh, low response times. Like, we can spin up really fast. Um, funded by y'all, which is awesome, right? And so we go in and we do construction-y things. And so we were there doing construction-y things, building this intake facility for Bethany House. And um, during phase two, I was sick. I was really sick. Um, like hallucinating fever so high. Um, I hallucinated my pastor standing over my bed 
uh, saying, are you going to die? And I was like, no. And he was like, don't die. And I was like, yes, sir. And then I didn't die. So that was cool. But the point being, Grindstone, while we have several board members, uh, the, the daily operations of is left to me. These missions are planned by me. People came from all over North America to work at the direction of me. And me was laid up in bed sick. And so that was a problem. And so when I realized I was sick, sick, uh, once I got to the point where I wasn't shaking so violently that I could not talk, walk, or even put socks on my feet, which by the way, preach it rooster. By the way, the only way I was able to do that was by speaking the name of my creator over and over again for a half an hour until my body stilled. So take that as a data point. Um, I made a list of notes. And I summoned my people, and we had, uh, I started delegating, making sure that the people who were working with me on site understood my commander's intent. What do I need to happen? Why do I need it to happen? And it's also important to note here that I had already delegated people to deal with certain aspects of the job. You don't run a mission with multiple phases and several dozen people at a time and several dozen vehicles and tens of thousands of dollars in uh, materials and infrastructure. There's just a nationwide coordination to make stuff like this happen, right? You don't run that all by yourself. And so that's perhaps the first lesson there. Leadership is absolutely required. But this is something that Jocko talks about, decentralized command. You need, even your subordinates need to be leaders so that they can lead the people that they've been trusted to, okay? Or entrusted with. So leadership is not simply just a top-down thing. It's also a bottom-up thing and a side-to-side -side thing. And so the leader should be leading other leaders. So ergo, if you're the leader, there needs to be other leaders with you, whether they're Lateral to you in the chain of command, above you or below you, you need to be surrounded by leaders. Leaders, I guess point two is, you should be the type of leader that employs enough self-awareness to understand when you need to be a follower because somebody else is being the leader for this moment, for this facet of the project, because this thing is their subject matter. Right, They are the subject matter expert in this thing, so they get to drive the bus for a while while you sit back. So that's probably point number two right there. Um, point number three, and I did a bunch of this on Patreon recently, so if you're interested in more leadership stuff, there's a bunch of leadership and business building stuff that's been posting on Patreon over the last month or two. So you can check that out if you haven't already. Uh, but number three is leaders should not be, you should not have what's called a key man issue or a key woman issue that if we lose this one person, the whole thing falls apart. You don't want to do that. You want to build your organization in such a way that if we lose one person, we're not stranded. We're not dead in the water. And lose might be, they take a 30-06 AP round through the forehead or God forbid, by the way, uh, or they get the Kung flu or they break their leg and they can't come to the mag meeting for the next 12 weeks or whatever, right? So decentralized command for sure, but there should be multiple people capable of leading in your organization. And the reason I bring all this up is because there's so much interest from y'all in building mags, mutual assistance groups, as there should be, because it takes many people to do mighty things. It's not, even throughout history, when, when mighty things are accomplished by one man or one woman, they're not. There might be one man or one woman who gets the credit for that, but it's incredibly rare that it's literally one person that is like, really the only thing that's coming to mind is like Nikola Tesla 
And to be fair, that guy died penniless in a hotel room shortly after being robbed of all of his intellectual property. So maybe being a loner, not so much. Now, granted, he was brilliant, but that's like the only example that's coming to mind of somebody that was like a, a one-man show. Um, and he was... I guess it depends on how you define success as well. Wow, shiny object syndrome. Look at that squirrel. Point being, mighty things are done by groups of people, not individuals. And so even if an individual gets credit, there's almost always a group of people surrounding that individual that make things happen. And to that end, shout out to everybody in the Bear Nation and at Grindstone Ministries that makes things happen. Because that's really the crux of this whole video, is that... Grindstone accomplished wonderful things on site. A whole ton of work got done because of excellent project management, because of excellent logistics, because of excellent tradespeople, because of excellent support infrastructure, um, excellent food. <laughs> Bless you, brother. Right? I guess that falls under logistics. But everybody did their job without really having to be told or babysat. Which is perhaps element four to discuss here is that when you surround yourself with good people and you entrust them and empower them to do their job, you can leave them alone because you intend to, because that's your management style. That's my management style. Hey, I would like this to happen. What do you need for that to happen? And how can I get out of your way? Where am I going to be a stumbling block to you? Let's mitigate that now. Let me get out of your way. And then if you need me, come see me. But you are approved up to this level to execute authority up to this many man hours, this many doll hairs, whatever. Just make it happen. And if you need my input, come see me. But otherwise, you don't need to come ask permission. You have permission. Go do right? And so we do this same thing on mission because we have a bunch of people who have been, I trust them, they've been entrusted and they've been empowered. I have equipped them, we have equipped them to get the mission accomplished. And so it was awesome that even though I was laying in bed with a fever so high, I was hallucinating my pastor questioning whether or not I was going to be shuffling off this mortal coil and be gathered to my people into the bosom of Abraham. <laughs> A ton of stuff still got done. And so that's a big part of leadership too. And you know what? When I was well enough to get up and walk around again, I tried to let every single person I came in contact with know how much I appreciated them doing the job that they did. Um, and we operate, maybe this is element five, and then we'll put a bow on it. We operate under what we call big boy rules, okay? Meaning that everybody here, here, right, on site, on mission, on project, whatever, like when we do business, when we do life, when you are in the presence of bear or a bear organization or something that I've put my fingertips into or my hand on, we run on big boy rules. You're responsible for you. I'm responsible for me. If you need my help, I will give it to you. If I need your help, I will ask you for it. If there's anything I can do to equip you, empower you, or entrust you further, please let me know. And I will, to the best of my ability, give it to you. If there's anything that you need to equip me with or empower me with, please give it to me. And then we're going to get out of each other's ways. No stumbling block, right? No stumbling block. Hashtag no stumbling block. I do not want to hold you up, okay? And so... <sighs> I'm proud as punch of what got done under the banner of Grindstone while I was laying in bed, feeling like I was going to die. And uh, I think there's some takeaways in there for people who are putting together mags, mutual assistance groups, or teams, or just neighborhood watch, community gatherings of like-minded individuals, especially with everything we have going on today, you know, with the... People are texting me on my phone. Um, you know, with the global situation, right? People, I think, are feeling the need to coalesce into groups of competent people. Have at it. Have at it. 
So, just a few takeaways. I appreciate y'all. I really do. Uh, thank you for supporting us in everything that we do. Uh, it means the world to me. It really does. And I'm honored and humbled that you let us into your life on the regular. And uh, I appreciate you. If you'd like to check out Patreon, you can click this. I think he's up here. He might be up here, but I think he's up here. But now I'm wondering if, if he actually is over here. Somewhere up here is the baby bear. Click on that. It's a buck a month or more. 24 exclusive pieces of content a month. Uh, Patreon is the economic engine of Bear Nation. It's how we are able to fuel the vehicle, per se. Right? It's what keeps this thing moving forward. And so we're deeply appreciative of our patrons. Thank you very much. I'd consider it. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Meh. Nah. Shalom, y'all.